Hey guys, welcome to Drawing with Waffles. Today I'm going to show you how I use gradients in my digital illustrations, how I can take an illustration like this and turn it into this. I'd like to give a shout out to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Skillshare is an online learning community of over 14,000 classes for creators of all kinds, with classes ranging from the creative, like how to use watercolors or designing a character, to technology, like learning to edit videos or game design. Use the link in the description and the promo code WAFFLES2 for two free months of a Skillshare membership. Now let's get into my favorite feature of digital art, gradients. To find the gradient tool, you're going to uh, look on your toolbar, which is along the left side of your Photoshop interface, and um, you're going to find the paint bucket tool. Click and hold it, and you'll see that the gradient tool is um, toggled underneath the paint bucket tool. So you toggle them on and off depending on whether you need the paint bucket tool or the gradient tool. Once you've selected the gradient tool, you will see a brand new gradient toolbar and it's up at the top and those are your settings for using the gradient tool. I'll just go through each of the little options so that you can use them to the best of your own advantage and you'll be good to go. The first thing on the left here is your gradient presets, which are created by Adobe, and you can use those as you want. There's these cool gradient, <laughs> like there's a cool gradient one where it's a rainbow that I'll use sometimes. I used to use that a lot as a kid. Now it's not so functional, but it's there, so if you wanna play around with it and learn how to use gradients, that's a fun way to do it, because you'll see all the different patterns that you can create. The two gradient presets that I use the most are the first one, which is foreground to background, which is usually defaulted to, and then the second one is foreground to transparency. So that takes the foreground color and gradients into transparency, which is what I use for just about everything. I don't think I ever really use any of the other presets. To the right of the presets, you have your um, form of gradient or the type of gradient that you wanna use. The first one here is linear. Second, you have radial gradients. Third, you have the angle gradient, which I have no idea when you would ever use that. It's really useless to me. Fourth, you have the reflected gradient. And fifth, you have the diamond gradient. But just about always I'm using the radial gradient if you see me using a gradient in an illustration or speed paint. To the right of those options, you can actually apply a layer style to each new gradient you create on the same layer. That can get a little confusing, but I've found that it's much easier to just put your gradients on a separate layer and just create a layer style on that layer. That way you can toggle it on and off. If you don't understand what I'm talking about there, then you probably should just stay away from that option and not use it. Next to that we have the opacity option, and this works as you might expect. The lower number you have in there, then the more transparent the gradient is going to be. Next to that, we have three toggleable options. Um, the first one you see is reverse, which reverses the foreground and the background colors. This can be pretty useful. And you'll actually notice that when you toggle this here over on the gradient, it will reverse the foreground and the background color, but it remains um, down at the bottom here where your actual colors are chosen, they stay the same. They, the foreground color still remains the foreground color and the background color still remains the background color. Next to that you have dither. I really don't know what that means and I don't use it so I don't really worry about it. I think it has something to do with how soft the gradient is but I haven't had any issues so I don't really worry about that. Next to that you have the transparent. This allows transparency so I keep this on. So now we can place our gradients, now that we know how everything works. Um, to place a gradient, you're going to click, and then as you drag, it's going to actually create a line, and that is how long the gradient is. And the first place you click is where the gradient is going to start, and wherever you drag to and let go, um, that is where the gradient will end. So in a radial gradient, that's where the circle will end, or that's the direction the gradient will be if you're using a linear gradient, and things like that. But you'll see as I place these gradients that uh, each one I place blocks out the previous one that I created. And this is because I have it set at the foreground to background gradients, which were in our presets, if you remember. Since it has 100% opacity, we're not going to be able to see through each gradient that we place. And we're going to select foreground to transparent. Now I'm going to select radial gradient, which is the most common option that I use. And as we place these, you'll see I can add a bunch of different gradients, and we're going to see each one, little circle radial gradients, each one is starting as the foreground color and smoothing out into transparency. And now that you know all the little settings that can go into gradients and the presets that I actually use for my gradients, I'm going to show you how I use them in my illustrations and so that you can create illustrations like me or so you can create more gradients in your work and create a much softer coloring style and things like that. So here I have a simple sketch that I just threw together for this tutorial and I've added some flat colors. I'm not 100% on any of the colors, so um, as I go along, I'm probably gonna change them, but here we have them and I'm gonna add some gradients and 
Well, basically show you how I use gradients from adding it to color changes for shading and for adding a little blush to those little cheeks. So let's get started. If you're planning on using gradients, it is extremely important to put every color on a separate layer. I talk about this a lot because it's just really sped up my process of coloring anything, basically, is by using separate layers for each color. So every time you th put down like the blue, it should be a layer and you can name it blue if you want. I'm too lazy, I'm not gonna name it, but <laughs> you got your blue layer, then you have your pink layer, and you got your skin layer and you got your hair layer and stuff like that and keep going until you're done. I use clipping masks to keep all the colors contained but as long as you have each color on a separate layer with transparency and then lock the transparent pixels you'll be good to go. Like I said earlier in the tutorial I basic I almost 100% use radial gradients so I've got that all set up and I'm just going to add a nice I feel like I really wanted this dress to gradient into another color I'm not 100% which sure what color I'm gonna use yet but here I am just throwing on some pink or purple I don't know what you'd call that and just throwing it on there as like so it's blue at the top of her dress and it becomes a pink at the bottom and because I'm using a radial gradient I can actually add little bits of this pink anywhere that I want it like here on the sleeves I can add it like just select where the sleeves are and add the pink and um, I can just keep adding this radial gradient anywhere that I need and it's not going to um, go over any of the parts that I don't want it. And here's more of a demonstration of me using the gradients for shading even though I've already added that color change gradient. I'm now taking that blue color on that multiple layer so I have that second layer for the shading and I'm going over it with a darker color set to multiply and adding little shading all around the dress just to give it a little bit more shape and not so flat well so it doesn't look so flat and a tip with used for doing this is I use little short bursts of the radial gradient and go all the way around the hem of the dress so it just looks like the dress isn't just falling flat it's got a little bit of a bounce to it since there's a little floof to the dress it's gonna look like it curves in a little bit near the bottom if you're using the gradient for shading the way to get the most bang for your buck is to definitely mix it in on that same layer so as I said I made a layer that's for shading and I'm adding the gradients everywhere but then mix in some normal cell shading so you, that's what I did here on that little like I don't know what you'd call it it's just a little bunched up bit of <laughs> fabric that goes around her dress for a little bit of texture it's very very subtle but it's the way you're gonna get the most like most fluid use of gradients is by mixing it in with the shell shading or you can also do soft shading by just using a brush that is soft or feathered on the edges instead of a harsh one. I just prefer the harsh ones because I think it's more fun. Another place that I almost always use gradients is hair. Even if I'm too lazy to like cell shade the rest of the picture, I'll definitely still use it in the hair. Well, when I when I use it for the hair, I always grab it the color that I've already used to color the hair, and then I'm gonna move down into the right in your color picker. That's making it darker and more saturated. And I think it just makes your hair just look so much more lively. And I really like to do that. So that's what I'll do. And then I'll grab the color that used to be the hair and then add little shines. And if you'd feel like that's not quite bright enough for what you want, so go to the color picker and then move your little cursor up into the left. That way it'll be lighter and less saturated. And it, it just looks like light is hitting it depending on you know if you have an environment for your picture you're gonna have to take more things into account but when we're just adding colors to our little illustrations it works just fine and lastly I use uh, gradients for blush actually I used to always use gradients for blush but I've gotten more into using just a brush tool for it um, but I thought I would explain how I used to do it with blush because it was really a time saver when I didn't know what I was doing I always do blush on a separate layer because I'm going to set it to multiply so we're going to create a new layer zoom in on the face, add the smallest little gradients of this light pink color over each cheek. Then I set it to multiply and then it, it just it'll, it just blends better with the skin. Um, so once you have that, I'm going to erase anywhere that's outside of the skin. If you weren't able to select just the skin layer to do it first, I usually do that. And then I erase it so see where it overlapped the some of the dress, I just erase it and then it looks a little bit more fluid. Now I'm taking the brush and just adding just a little dash of the pink to her nose just to give it a little bit more color. And I also use this same technique or the same layer actually for the lips. Sometimes I'll use a bit of a different color so it doesn't seem just so washed out. And that's where we have the face. Anyway, these are just simple demonstrations of how I use it. If you want to see how I use it and like when I put a lot of time into it, you can check out some of my other speed paints. One that I really used it a lot in was my Frozen Fever speed paint when I drew Anna and Elsa in their Frozen Fever outfits. I used a ton of gradients for that one. And I'll also have links to some of the other speed paints where I used a lot of gradients so you can really see these in action. 
Hope you enjoyed learning all about gradients, at least what I remember to tell you. <laughs> um, and uh, the best way to learn about gradients is just experimenting with it. That's how I learned, like nobody taught me. So it just takes a little time to learn some things sometimes, but just, you know, putting in a little effort will go a long way. So I wish you all luck with that. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. If you want, you can, again, check out those speed paints and see how I use gradients. Subscribe if you like this channel, and I'll see you guys all next week, and I hope you have a very delicious evening full of waffles. Bye! Oh, and don't forget to check out Skillshare with the link in the description.